Welcome back to the Gosforth Handyman Tip Library. Hi, and welcome back to the Gosforth Handyman Tip Library. First of all, I just want to give these guys a quick mention. Corfix by Metex. They sent us some stuff ages and ages ago to have a look at, and I just haven't had a chance. I think I might have mentioned it in another video at some point. They sent me these to look at, which are special fixings for dot and dab dry line walls. I have had a quick look, they seem really good. I'm gonna do a proper video on them at some point, but they're basically a big plug with like a metal shield that goes kind of inside the plug and fills up the cavity to stop the cavity from collapsing on itself. Very handy for like heavy duty things going on to dot and dab walls and stuff. Anyway, Sorry Metex, I just haven't had a second to properly look at them. I, it is on my list, so thanks for the t-shirt guys, that's awesome. Looking very new at the minute, but I'm sure it won't stay like that for very long. And I've also been sent these to have a look at as well, space plugs, these look interesting. Again, they're, they're like a problem solver, really good for the back of like kitchen units and stuff like that. They're basically an adjustable spacer. Look very interesting, I'm gonna have a look at those and a video will be coming up on those at some point as well. That's on me to-do list. What else is going on? I'll give you a quick tour around a, a typical week's work here at Gosforth Handyman. So at the moment, I've got these oak panels gluing up for a customer. So a uh, big glue up there of some American white oak, which is beautiful wood. I've got a finished panel somewhere. Hold on, let me try and find it. Uh, so here's a glued up panel ready for sanding, so I'll be sorting that out probably tomorrow at some point. I've got a, a desk here, which is like a kind of office desk. Ignore the sellotex. Uh, so I've got an office desk here that I need to change the size of it. I've got a whole load of shelving jobs coming up. So I have a whole load of plywood ready to um, cut down into shelves. I've got a whole load of MDF ready for the shelf bases again these are for um, floating shelves i do a lot of floating shelves so anyway my tip for you today in the gosseth handyman tip library sorry talking to tips it's a bit of a tip in here at the minute because there's just a lot of stuff going on at the minute actually well here's a thing here is a question for you that you might be able to help with i want to put uh finer toothed blade into this little evolution mitre saw. It's a great little job site saw and it just has a 210 mil blade in it as standard. Now I want to put a Freud like a 60 tooth blade in or something like that. Something that's just a bit cleaner for cutting trims and stuff. The only trouble is the only Freud blades I can find are, are 216 millimeters and that is uh, a 210 mil blade in it and I can't find anything in the specs anywhere whether or not a 216 mil blade's going to be all right in it and I'm just wondering if anyone's tried that and managed to uh, make it work um, before I spend 40 quid on a blade that doesn't fit. I think this has a 25.4 mil bore on it but the Freud blades have a 30 mil hole on them so I'm just going to use some Arbor adapters and hopefully that will sort that out but I'm just wondering if anyone's tried upgrading the blade on the 210 CMS saw. So, talking of which, I think what I'm also going to do is upgrade the blade on this one because I hardly ever cut metal. So I think I'm going to switch this over to a 60 tooth blade as well, just for getting cleaner cuts. And then what I might do, I think, so this is a 255 blade in this, and I've still got my old DeWalt chop saw here, which I think is a, um, try and do this one-handed. I'm sure it's the same size blade, I think. Oh, would you believe it? It's around the other side. Mm. Trying to do this while holding the camera is a little bit tricky. It is a, don't worry, it's not plugged in. Oh, it's all worn off. 250, so a 255 blade in that. So I think what I might do Oh, but it's a different arbor size. Oh, it might not fit after all, I'm not sure. I was going to say I'll put the evolution blade into this. 
and have this for cutting metal. Basically have this dedicated for cutting metal because if I sell this I'm going to get an out for it. That's what I was debating doing but not sure. Well that's another thing that I'm going to have a look at at some point. I've still got a router table I need to build. Oh the track saw by the way, amazing. Wish I'd bought this years ago. Put it this way, these boards, they're 2.4 metre boards, they're a bit too big to go on my joint there. So getting nice straight edges on them was a bit of a challenge. The track saw did it absolutely perfect. It left us with jointable edges on the, on the oak from the track saw, so thumbs up there. That's another thing, I need to sort out the dust extraction for it, which neatly leads on to my tip for today, a bit of a workshop tip, is get yourself some remote control sockets. Oh my God, where have these been all my life? They're, they're dead cheap. I don't know why I didn't get it sooner. So basically I've got a little remote control here. This particular one came with five remote control sockets and you can switch each one on and off. So let me just turn the music down a bit. That was the other thing I was gonna mention. I finally got round to refreshing my music collection on my little HTC and I'm very into the uh, K&D sessions that I've um, finally got round to putting on here. Some awesome stuff on there. Anyway, absolutely tremendous. So I've got one for me compressor, which I can now switch on and off. So if the phone goes and the compressor's running, I can just switch it off from the remote. I've got another one on my studio light, which I generally, I normally have this light on all the time, to be honest, because I just like the extra light in the workshop, even if I'm not filming. But it's quite nice being able to switch it on and off from the remote. And the best bit is uh, dust extraction. So that is my little tip for you today. Get yourself some remote control sockets. These are absolutely brilliant. Let me just show you what they look like. They're just basically, uh, they come pre-programmed or you can program them up um, as well if you want different numbering, but basically, with this particular type, each one has a number on, you see. So this one is number one. So that one does whatever whatever number one is on the remote and everyone's got its own number. And they just go in line with whatever appliance. They're supposed to be rated, I think, to 10 amps each or 200, sorry, 2,400 watts. Now my table saw with dust extraction on is probably a bit more than that, but it seems to be fine. It's not been a problem. Uh, because I've got my table saw and dust extraction going into the one socket on that. But again, it just means if I've got the dust on and the phone goes or whatever, I can just switch it off straight away from the socket, switch the compressor on, Honestly, for, for 20 quid or whatever it was, for five of them, I think, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. I will double check and add it below, like here. Um, but it was like not expensive for five of them with a remote control. Um, and you can buy them much cheaper than that. I'm not gonna give you the individual brand of this because I have no idea whether or not they're any good. Just go onto Amazon or eBay or whatever. You'll have to do your own research. So there you go, a little workshop tip for you today. I hope you found that handy. Get yourself some remote control sockets. It will make life so much easier in, if you've got a little workshop. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.